Could you please discuss the background for this study? Sure. This study is about female urethral stricture, and female urethral stricture is a very rare disease. Um, it might be underdiagnosed, and it's definitely difficult to diagnose. And so, um, as researchers, we knew that clinicians were faced with difficulty um, knowing how to help guide their, their patients into which treatment options to choose. Right now, we know that the literature on female urethral stricture um, altogether, there were about 200 cases reported, so not, not very many in all of the literature. And so really when we, um, when the Society of Urodynamics, Female Public Medicine, and Urogenital Reconstructions Research Network got together, they thought that this was uh, an important area to sort of pull resources together and pull the collective member experience um, to, to create a study. And I think this study is very unique because it did um, put out uh, as a participation query to all members of SUFU. And we did have 23 participants from across the US and Canada and even South America. So it really is a real world um, large experience with this very rare disease. And what were some of the notable findings and were any of them surprising to you and your co-authors? I think the first thing that was very surprising to us was that the rates of recurrence among women with female urethral stricture in this um, very diverse cohort um, of institutions and patients was quite high. It was 36% at a median of 15 months. Um, and, and so that is something that I, I'm not sure that um, we were counseling patients about that recurrence rates are quite that high. So I think that is one of the main findings and take home messages that should be discussed. That, um, secondly, we found that, and this is not as surprising because we have some literature among men and male urethral stricture reconstruction that parallels this, but um, we found that women who had endoscopic treatments, so treatments that either dilate or cut open the scar, had a much higher recurrence rate than women who underwent um, uh, reconstructive techniques like urethroplasties. And um, when we looked on an analysis of at multiple different factors, there really wasn't anything that explained that difference except for the surgical technique. And do you and your co-authors plan to conduct further research on this topic? And if so, what would the focus be? Yeah, so this is um, a very rich database. And so we um, as a collaborative effort, have actually asked for proposals for research using this database so we can continue to grow the research in this field. One of the things that we're excited to look at next are patient reported outcome measures. So we know in a variety of surgical outcomes that an anatomic cure might not equal patient um, quality of life changes or patient reported outcomes. And so we're actually now looking at um, whether um, doing surgery and these treatments different treatments change how patients actually feel. And I think that will be really interesting because we actually don't have um, much data on that topic at all. What would you say is the take home message for the practicing urologist? In our study, we found that the recurrence rate for female urethral stricture um, is quite high. And so that should be something that is discussed with patients in the clinic um, and to let them know that this might be more of a um, long-term chronic uh, problem rather than a, um, you know, just so they can ex know what to expect in their treatment and know that there might be a need for further procedures down the road. Um, I think it's also important for urologists to um, discuss the, the trade-offs between between different surgical techniques. And um, you know, one of the trade-offs is the recurrence rate. And in this study, we looked at um, endoscopic treatment versus urethroplasties. And we did find that there's a trade-off of um, recurrence rates. And so that's a discussion to have with, with um, patients so that they can make a patient-centered and informed decision. Is there anything else that you feel our audience should know about the research? Um, you know, I, I think I would highlight that this is probably the largest amount of data that we have on this specific um, condition and that we, um, to me, this is just the tip of the iceberg to start thinking critically about how we can um, improve the treatment rates. Uh, and so uh, I, would, I would say that I would encourage researchers and urologists to start thinking critically about this disease and maybe um, look at ways that we can improve techniques 
to um, decrease the recurrence rate. 